And this is how you can make a bug report command for your discord.js version 14 bot. So let's go and get started. Before I show you how to do this, I'd like to say that if you'd like to get access to the source code from this video or other videos on my channel, you can do so by joining a channel membership on YouTube or a subscription over on Discord. On Discord, if you get the god or custom bot tier, you will get access to that source code. And on YouTube here, if you get the super god or custom bot tier, you will also get access to that source code. And of course, on both platforms, if you get the custom bot tier, me and my team will code you a personalized custom discord bot if any of this is of interest to you go ahead and click the links in the description below to get started with this and let's go and get into the video so you can start by going over to community here and we're going to go ahead and create report.js and here we can do const and we're going to make our slash command builder we can also get our model builder we can get our action row builder we can get our text input builder and we can also get our text input style and then we can do equals require and we're going to go ahead and get discord.js and after doing that we can go ahead and do model module.exports we can go ahead and open this up we're going to get data which is going to be new slash command builder then we can go ahead and set a name this is going to be report and we can go ahead and set a description we can go ahead and say send a bug report to the bot devs and we can go ahead and add a comma we're going to do async executes we can go ahead and get our interaction and then we can go ahead and open this up in here we're going to go ahead and do const model equals new model builder we're going to go ahead and start off by setting a title in here we can go ahead and say bug and command abuse reporting and we can go ahead and set a custom id in here we can go ahead and say bug reports then we can go ahead and make a text input builder so we can do const command equals new text input builder we're going to go ahead and set a custom id this is going to be command then we can go ahead and set required we're going to go and make that true next what we can go ahead and do is we're going to go ahead and set a placeholder for me i'm going to say please only state the command name and then we can go ahead and set a label. We can go ahead and say what command has a bug or has been abused. And finally, we can go ahead and set a style. So we can do set style. And we can do text input style. And we can do dot short because we only want a short command name and not the actual description. So the last text input builder we're actually going to go ahead and make is the description because all the other information we can actually get from the model itself or the interaction that the model makes. So then here we can go ahead and make this a description and we're going to go ahead and change this to description. And then for our placeholder, we're going to go ahead and say be sure to be as detailed as possible so the developers can take action. And for our label, we're going to go ahead and replace this with describe the bug or command abuse. And we're going to go ahead and change the style to a paragraph because we do need this to be a little bit longer. Then we can do const one equals and we can go ahead and make a new action row builder. We're going to go ahead and do dot add components and we can go ahead and get our command. Lastly, we can go ahead and do const two equals new action rope builder. And we're gonna go ahead and add components again. And we can go ahead and get our description variable. So we're gonna have one and two, both for our command and our description. Next, we can actually go ahead and add these two components to the model. So we can go ahead and do model dot add components. And we can go ahead and get one and we can go ahead and get two. And then finally, we can say await interaction dot show model. And we can go ahead and get our model just like that. So then after doing that, we can actually go ahead and move over into our index.js file. So here we're going to go to the very bottom and we can go ahead and comment this report so we know what we're dealing with. Then we can do client.on, we can go ahead and get events that interaction creates. We can do async interaction and we can go ahead and open this up. We can go ahead and start by saying if no interaction dot is model submit. Then we can just go ahead and return. Then we can go ahead and say if interaction dot custom ID equals 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 and we can say model, then we can go ahead and open this up. So in here, we can go ahead and say const command equals interaction dot fields that get text input value. And we can go ahead and get our command text input value, which is actually going to be the command custom ID. Then we can do the same for our description. So we can make our description equal to interaction dot fields that get text input value. And we can also get our description just like that. Next, we can go ahead and get all of the data we're actually going to input into the message being sent to the developer server. So we can go ahead and do const ID equals interaction.user.id. Then we can do const member equals interaction.member. Finally, we can do const server equals interaction.guild.id. Or we can go ahead and say no server provided. Next, we can actually go ahead and define our channel. So we can do const channel equals await client.channels.cache.get. 
we're going to go ahead and get the channel from the client because we do not have it, the developer server from the interaction. So to do that, we're actually going to go ahead and get the channel ID we want to send the message in. All right, so after inputting that channel ID, we can actually go ahead and make our embed. So we can do const embed equals new, and we can get our embed builder. And we can go ahead and set a color. This is going to be blurple. And then we can go ahead and set a title here. This can go ahead and be report from, and we can go ahead and get our member just like that. And then we can go ahead and add fields. We're going to get our name. For our name, we can go ahead and get the user ID and we can get value. This is just gonna be our ID. Then we can go ahead and add some more fields. We're gonna go ahead and get our name. Uh, this is going to be our member, and we can go ahead and put in our member. Then we can go ahead and add fields again. We're gonna get name. This can go ahead and be our server ID. And we're going to go ahead and get value and we can go ahead and input our server id or our server variable then lastly we can go ahead and do add fields we're going to go ahead and get name uh, we can go ahead and do command reported and we can go ahead and do value and we can go ahead and open this up we're going to go ahead and get command and finally we're actually going to go ahead and get the description so we can do add fields we can go ahead and get name and we can go ahead and say reported description and we can go ahead and do value and in here we can just go ahead and get our description variable so after doing that we can just go ahead and set a timestamp and we can also go ahead and set a footer we can go ahead and do text and we can go ahead and say report bug system so now we can actually go ahead and send this so we can do await interaction to apply and we can do content and we can go ahead and say your report has been submitted and we're going to go ahead and set informal to true. So what we just did here is we sent the reply to the model. So the person who actually executes the command reporting the event using the model is going to see this message. So after that or before it, I'm going to do it before because it makes a little bit more sense. We can actually go ahead and send the embed to the report. So we can go ahead and do await channel.send and we can get our embeds and we're going to go ahead and input our embed just like that. The last thing we can actually go ahead and do is we're going to go ahead and catch an error just like this in case there is an error reporting just so that the bot doesn't crash. The last thing that we're going to go ahead and do here is I accidentally put the model as our custom ID. If we go into the reports here, uh, as you can see, our model custom ID is actually bug reports. So we can go back over here and we can go ahead and switch that out. So with that, we are actually done. So we can go ahead and restart the bot and test this out. All right, so over in the Discord server, we can actually go ahead and test this out. I'm gonna test it out from my actual coding server. That way we can go ahead and send the report to my bot testing server. So we can go ahead and do report and we're gonna use ESCII. All right, so here it's gonna go ahead and open up the model so we can actually go ahead and test this out. So I'm gonna pretend we're using the ban command. And so for this pretend report, we can actually go ahead and say it didn't ban the member but it said it did so we just made up a completely false report here uh, so now we can actually go ahead and submit the report and as you can see here it's going to say your report has been submitted and if we go over to the bot testing server in the reports channel as you can see it's going to go ahead and say report from and it's going to try to add me uh, you could just do member.user.username or something like that uh, that way it's not going to do that um, but it's going to go ahead and give me my user id it's going to say my member uh, so it did actually work for the member thing i'm not really sure why it didn't work up there and then it's going to say the server id which is my server id here and it's going to say all of the information that i submitted so that's how you can code an advanced bug report system for discord.js version 14 bot if you do need any help with this go ahead and join the server in the description below and use our help channels and we'll be happy to help you out and you might as well just join anyways because it is a pretty good coding community and with that i'll see you guys in the next video